Hi everyone, Dr. Tracy here, and I wanted to go over some code for our topic this week, sorting and searching. So if you click on the sorting and searching link, um, you notice that I put some other videos up here. I'd really like you to read them, especially this guy. I think this guy shares some good stuff, but um, I also put a video going over the PowerPoint, the topics out of the chapter. But what I want to go through right now is the worked example for chapter two because it's a good example of the comparison of different sort methods. So let's look at the worked example for chapter 12, and this is enhancing the insertion sort algorithm. So what's happening in chapter 12 is it's saying it's an implementing an insertion sort uh, after a shell sort, which is what it's called, to show the different ways that it works. So in the problem, it's going to run the sort over an entire array and so that the final sort won't have to do much work. Basically, it's going to make it easier. So the way that this shell sort is going to go, or this insertion sort, is it arranges in rows and columns and then sorts each one separately. So if you take all of those numbers that are in an array and you arrange them into four columns and now you just sort each column in the correct order, then we put it back together again. And that's how this sort is going to work. Now you keep repeating this process until every time that you do this, we have until finally we get the numbers that are sorted. So it doesn't actually really break everything up into those pieces, but it does get them in a better order. And that helps you figure out what you're going to do with the code in uh, an, an order. So let's take a look at each of these pieces that are part of this very long program. I'm going to skip over to uh, the wherever I have the worked example. And ta-da. Okay. I think that was nothing, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can see in here that the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to sort a column using this insertion sort. And it will take array, which is the array to sort, the size of the array, the first element in the column, and the gap between the elements and columns. So this insertion sort function is written here, and it uses an array, the size of the array, this the first index of the first el of the element in the column and the gap between the elements and the column. So um, this is saying for i equals k plus c, i less than size, i, i, i plus c. This is just creating what that array is going to be. And it moves all the larger elements up. And it goes through each element and then divides them into a second row, which is what j is going to be. And that does that break apart value that looks something like this, although it does it sort of hypothetically. Um, so then next, it takes the shell sort of the array and the size, and it finds the columns, and it adds each of those columns into its own separate vector. And for each of those columns, it's going to put them in order using that insertion sort that was written just right up here. So now we've got the, the whole array um, broken up into columns and then sorting each of the columns, which is what happens with this one. You can see where the columns are sorted in order. So if the arrays are sorted and the columns are sorted according to this sort, then we can put them back together and everything will be sorted completely. So um, let's look how this runs. So here's a demo with 20 elements because it's pulling from this sort demo right here. And if I say enter the array size, and I'm going to say um, if there were 100 numbers, which is what I'm setting as the K element, then it shows that it does the shell sort, the library sort, and the insertion sort. It didn't take any time. If I run this again, and I say 1,000, we're going to take a little bit longer. Not much. Huh? Really doesn't take much at all to do this. So what it's doing is it's putting these numbers in order. And if it, let's try 10, no, that's going to take a long time. Let's try 5,000. Taking a little bit longer. So uh, 
you can see 10 seconds now. Um, so the shell sort is only going to take point 0.2. And this is what comes up as big O notation. So let's look where these are coming from out of the sort demo. In the sort demo, it is showing that it's going to demo with these number of elements, which is based on a size. The size is set here at 20. And then it's going to random fill those values according to the size. And then it's going to print the values in size. So that's what's happening here. Array size. Now, um, then it says uh, enter array size. And then the size will take, uh, go through and do each of these different types of sorts. So understanding what each of those types of sorts are, the ins insertion sort and the library sort and the shell sort all go in a different way. So in this, um, once it takes, uh, want here, it'll show the um, iterations that it'll go through to try and put it in order. And that's where it takes the values and then compares them and then puts one in order, then goes space after space. So the insertion sort is the longest way of sorting. You can sort of think of that as um, if you had a deck of cards in your hand and you just moved through them and put the lowest cards in the front and the higher cards in the back and you kept going through it iteration time after time until you got that deck in order. So that's what you're going to, uh, that's what you're going to do for each random value. You'll have to run through it. The shell sort is going to divide it into columns, put those columns in order, and then put them back together. So that would be the same as if you divided the deck into separate piles, put the piles in order, and then put the deck back together and try to keep doing that. So that's what's happening with this piece of code. I hope this is helpful and uh, talk to you soon. Let me know if you have any questions.